Hey out there. Uh, welcome to our New Hampshire Cross Country podcast. Uh, we're coming li- uh, to you live from New Hampshire Cross Country.com, powered by Runners Alley. Um, so we're, you know, starting this conversation, um, just all things New Hampshire Cross Country. And I do have a guest with me that wasn't here last week. Ooh. Hi, I'm Coach French. Uh, I am the assistant cross country coach over at Londonderry. I am also sometimes known as the trader uh, because I coach the long distance runners at Pinkerton during indoor and outdoor tracks. Everybody likes to tease me, but uh, I love it. It's great. because I do both because it's fun. So Yeah, and I actually really like that you do both because I think you're just there for the runners and that's what it's all about, truly, right? Truly am. Yeah. Like my, when people ask, like, what's your favorite race? I love getting to go to, like, meet a champions in New England it's just because I get to cheer for everyone. Right? I don't care where you're from. As long as you're, like, nice and working hard, like, yo. That's awesome. Let's all succeed. I love you know? it. I love it. And, again, I'm Amy Bernard. I coach uh, the Pinkerton Trailblazers, so welcome back. And we have one more person if you want to re- uh, shout out. Yes, I am Davio DeLuca. I work for New Hampshire Cross Country and New Hampshire Track and Field, and I am also a volunteer coach at Cobra. Awesome. Well, um, welcome back to our listeners. Um, For those of you that are new, uh, we started this last week. So this is officially episode two, um, where we just have our our hopes for the podcast is just to um, continue to uh, recognize uh, what our young people are doing out here in New Hampshire um, and, um, you know, have some conversations around running and cross country and, um, you know, just uh, talk about some of the topics topics that are important to you all um, and, you know, talk to some of our former athletes, uh, you know, highlight some of uh, the week's happenings and things um, to come, uh, you know, and just really make it something that, that you all want to hear. Do you have anything to add as we're just kind of adding you to this podcast? Uh, yeah, I, I'm just, I think it's just really exciting to get to talk about running. And, you know, if you see me at meets and you want to come up and talk about any of this stuff and, you know, I write some of the previews and stuff for some of the meets. And if you ever see them and you're like, he's so wrong, and I want to <laughs> tell him, please do. I, you know, to me, that's all fun. Like, I, you know, I, I like writing them because it's fun to say controversial things sometimes and pick people to win that aren't you. And, and then you can come up and be like, I proved you wrong. And I'll be like, you sure did. Yeah. You know? Because I just like this is such a fun sport to be a part of. You know, you and I both ran. Right. Everybody involved today is a, a is a New Hampshire cross country alumni, which yeah, I think is pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, so well said, yeah. right? And you know, I mean, have have you ever met a runner that you? didn't have a great conversation with no it's so fun right like literally a few weeks ago i met somebody that just out of the blue that i had no clue was a runner and we just had this conversation he ran for londonderry in like the early 90s oh that's wild yeah it was yeah it was great so were you guys towing the line at the same time well no you weren't no, early we just, 90s. actually we're he would have been running him. when you were running oh okay yeah because he was slightly earlier than me okay and yeah it was funny though because we were relatively close but it, like we just missed basically and it's just, it's just neat, though. You go through life and you meet people and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun to talk about. So cool. So, uh, you know, we, we want to hear from you guys. Uh, I, I want to go back to the fact that we call this the New Hampshire Cross Country Podcast because we put it out to you all uh, last week that we're looking for a name because this is not um, that clever. It's not, it's not a good name. No, and it's not got, very it, catchy. It needs to be like... Like, like a pun, maybe, like a nice play on words or something. Right, right. You so, guys are probably smarter than we are, though. So. Oh, there, that's no question. Yeah. That's no question. But um, so, yeah, I'm looking for some people to give us some thoughts or ideas. And uh, we said if we pick your idea, you get a free T-shirt. Who doesn't love free gear uh, and swag? swag is the best kind. Right? Especially when it says New Hampshire Cross Country on it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so submit those names. Um, keep them coming, guys. Keep them rolling. Uh, and so, also, we have an update on how you can listen. So, uh, Davia, you want to tell us about that? Yeah, so, obviously, we're doing these live on YouTube, and then you can watch the recording on YouTube as well. Um, we are currently working on putting this on Spotify, so you can listen to it on Spotify Podcasts. And, obviously, uh, we'll update uh, the website and all the social media when that is live, and then you can go... And then you can go. Uh, listen to it on Spotify and also hopefully some other, um, you know, common podcasting platforms. So wherever you normally listen to your podcasts, um, hopefully New Hampshire Cross Country Podcast, unnamed New Hampshire Cross Country Podcast, will be available <laughs> there uh, relatively soon. <laughs> Wicked cool. So so that's awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we're, we're going viral. 
Yeah, let's hope so. Right? That'd like, be fun. Wouldn't we would, like need to be like, oh yeah, it's a podcast that like dozens of people listen to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been doing a podcast for four years about all things Pinkerton, and I think I got about six listeners. So <laughs> that feels like a win to me. Right? You know? I mean, like the fact that anybody is like, yeah, I'll consistently sit down and listen to this person. Right? Like, it's awesome. You must be doing at least something, right? Yeah, it's just <laughs> so fun to connect with people. So let's get into last week. Uh, so we had, you know, in my mind, the first like real big. Uh, invitational of the season season at Nashua North, um, and like we had a lot of stuff happening. It was exciting, right? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the girls first? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, it, right from the gun um, in in the varsity race, it was uh, just like a barn burner right from the gun. Um, interestingly, um, we you know weren't really expecting anyone to just go and grab the lead. We kind of expected uh, the girls to kind of all, all hang together. And Leah Perald, did I say that last name right? And if I didn't, I apologize. Does- I have no idea. Okay, so I'm going to just <laughs> shout out to Leah because um, she ran in a fantastic race. And if I'm saying your last name wrong, please come up and find she me. She was like me. shoes on fire from the yeah. minute the, the gun went off. Right? Like, and and um, she didn't quit. So, you know, you see her at mile one and she's got a massive lead. Um, and it just maintained the entire race uh, to finish that race. I mean, it is a fast course and only made faster by the changes that were made to the course because of the bridge that no longer exists, exists. But, um, uh, she, she finished in 1802, which is hauling. Yeah. So outstanding. Watching that race and she's, you know, we're at that hairpin turn kind of area where they come back to where the bridge used to be. And obviously she comes bombing up and no one's in visual range. And there's some awesome other runners in this race. And Going into this, I was like, I thought this was supposed to be pretty close. Am I was I just completely off the mark? And so I was like right. asking people afterwards, like, did I miss? That? They're like, no, nah, she was just like, incredible. Right. right. <laughs> I'm getting a message that it's Leia. So Leia, yeah. So I'm definitely pronouncing her name wrong. But um, yeah. So thank you for that. But yeah. So. Um, just like right from the beginning, super fast. Then we had a chase pack um, that was really exciting. And, um, you know, it was really uh, between uh, Hanover, Pinkerton and um, Bedford, uh, you know, as far as the team title went and um, just really strong performances at the beginning of the season. The times that we're seeing are times that we would see at Media Champions. Oh, for sure. So, they were, again, looking at the results afterwards was, was shocking. Right. Even like you, you were watching them, and this is true of the boys' race too, you could tell they were going fast, but then when they were finishing and I actually took my first look at the clock and I mm. saw what they were actually running, I was like, oh, they were running. Fast, fast. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I know my team, we had times that are uh, equivalent to many years uh, at Meta Champions, if not faster than many of my teams at Meta Champions. And it wasn't just my team, you know, we didn't, we yeah. came in second. So um, it just tells you uh, how strong like Hanover already is and Bedford already is. Um, just really outstanding races. And I think that just shows what kind of season we have that to look forward to on the on the women's side um because you know we talked about this last week but um i think the new hampshire teams are going to make a really strong showing against the other states later on in the season so and that was one of the things i was thinking as i was i wrote the manchester preview yesterday was that like oh man this is we're going to be competitive with those a lot of times on the voice side bishop hendrick in the last few years has right. kind of come in and kind of walloped everybody and i don't think they're going to get away with that this yeah. year yeah yeah so tell us about the boys race Oh, again, it's super exciting now. So again, I had written the preview and I had, I had picked Pinkerton to win. They, you know, they're coming in with the number one ranking and, right. and now Nashua South comes in with the upset, which was pretty exciting to watch. They looked really strong. And they did. They looked awesome. They're, they're top two runners in particular, just, you know, two, having two guys in the 1540s uh, in like early September, Fire. early in September. Exactly. Right. They were just cooking. And, but their whole top five was good. And it wasn't that Pinkerton was bad. And, you know, sometimes you, you know, you ask that question, did you win the meet or did the other team lose the meet? You know, and, and no, oh, man, it was just Nashua just won it. They ran really, really well and really, yeah. really strong one through five. And um, it was really exciting to watch. And watching Matt Giardina run 1508 was yeah. like, what? Right. That is Paul. And again, that's yeah. kind of his home course as a BG guy. But like, you know, he's somebody I think is kind of on the cusp of maybe starting to get a little national recognition for mm-hmm. how well he was, has started to run. And um, so it's going to be interesting to see how his, his season goes on. Does he start to, you know, bring the eyes back over to New Hampshire? Right. 
But we awesome. do. We have a secret New Hampshire guy in some regards in that we got one of the Phillips Exeter guys is ranked number two in the country. Did you know wow. that? Wow. And are we going to see him this weekend? We, we should talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, we'll but come that's, back to that's that. That's really cool. How cool is that? That's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, been, I mean. I feel like we've been lucky because obviously we had uh, Aiden the last couple right? of years and now Byron. And it's just like. Amazing. It's so, it's so fun to get to watch that kind of running. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think it just was like a really strong race uh, for on both sides super early in the season. Um, really good competition. Um, I would like to uh, shout out to just the Hanover team in general. Um, what uh, an exceptional day they had. Um, great start to the season. And I'm just really excited because I, I think that we're just going to make each other better. You know, or all the teams are going to make each other better. Um, just really, really strong, um, tight grouping, um, strong up front, but then also the rest of the pack. So, um, you know, in their JV race, let's go, let's take it back to the JV race that was before they, um, just dominated that race. I think yeah, they had the first seven awesome. spots. So awesome. really deep team. Yeah. Um, so and I'm going to shout out to them. Too. It wasn't, it's not even just their girls teams. Their boys and girls are both just excellent this mm -hmm. year, which is really fun. You know, you start thinking long-term as far as the season goes. And when you have a bunch of really good teams, they all push each other to do well at things like New England's. Right. And New England's is obviously such a wild card. You never really know what you're going to walk into there. Right. But it's really exciting when New Hampshire can can bring several good teams. And I love when we have some like whoever it is. I'm just so excited when a New Hampshire team wins New England's. Right. Like, and like, we can represent our state. Right. You know? It's just so fun. Yeah. You know, like Connecticut has great runners, and so does Rhode Island and Vermont. And like, and, you know, we don't see mass during uh, during cross country. But oh, it's so right. it's so fun to go and be able so to be cool. like we took on the number ones from all these other teams from all these other states. Like New Hampshire was the one, right? The one of ones. <laughs> uh, you know, I really uh, not to go go off of our agenda, but I really liked how I like I love how Rhode Island does it um, with all the, the flags out on the course. It's Their a great course, course is unbelievable. Have you know they had the whole finish line with the pumpkins, and then the first New Hampshire or not New Hampshire, but the first finisher. Uh, male and female from each state got to take home a pumpkin. Did you know that? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, That's like awesome. <laughs> uh, and I, I, maybe they had like their state flag too or something. I don't know. They do, do, I, the flag they, they, they do it right yeah. there. It's like it's just such it's a really cool well venue. It it's just it's a, a celebration great course too, though. It's yeah. kind of fast. It's flat. There's a lot of stuff where you can see them. Right. And it's so just a really cool. fun course to see New England's. And we're gonna drive all the way up to Belfast this year, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So yeah. yeah. Um, but I do want to. Um, I do want to just go back for a second. Uh, like you yeah. said, Hanover went one through seven in that girls JV race. And um, let's see, five of them are freshmen and two of them are sophomores. Whoa, I didn't even look at that. <laughs> yeah, so oh, that oh, team man. is going to be pretty Dynasty strong alert. <laughs> the next couple of years. Um, they spread from 2140 to 2223. So only wow. just over 40 seconds spread between their top seven in the JV race, which is That's unbelievable. Awesome. unbelievable. And we're going to see some massive improvement out of those young ladies as the season progresses because, uh, you know, it's so exciting to watch freshmen improve and they just take off so much time as they learn the like, you know, they get that training, the high school training, and they have the experience with the 5K, like the more races they have. So um, they're going to that. I didn't even realize that. Ooh. Imagine you're in that top seven, too. And you realize that, like, if you take your foot off the pedal at right. all, there's not just a person who wants to take your spot. You've got a list. Right. You've yeah. got an entire replacement varsity. Yeah, I, would, I would not be surprised for you. I would not be surprised if we saw, um, you know, some of those freshmen and sophomore actually uh, race on the varsity top seven at some point this year. Um, just because like you said, they, you know, there is that possibility that they improve, um, just so much, you know, freshman, sophomore year. So, um, yeah, by the end of the season, you know, if any of them make a big, big jump, they could, uh, they could be on that top seven. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I would agree. And I think that they're definitely doing something right over there. I listened to the interview. I mean, we know that, but I listened to the interview and, um, that they, the team interview and they were shouting out to their teammates that were injured. And, um, you know, you can just see that, that they have a real team, uh, philosophy. It's no I in team. And, and so that's already starting out really strong for them. I feel like in some respects, when you have the really good teams, that's just, it, it happens like organically. It's yeah. not even like the coach is like, I'm going to make you guys like each other. Right. It just ends up happening because sure. it's yeah. fun to win. It's good. And you're, 
you know, you're you're pushing each other and you just end up with this really awesome feeling of camaraderie. And, yeah, so. you know, someone, you know, you and I have both been coaching for a long time. And I think you, you know, it waxes and wanes as far as that side of things go. But I feel like whenever I've had really good teams, there just tended to naturally be this great uplift between the members of the team that they right. all wanted each other to succeed. And, you know, it's and it's from top to bottom. Right. And it's just yeah. really awesome to see. And yeah. they know they're part of something special, right? Yeah, they do. I mean, yeah. we're all part of something special in New Hampshire cross country, aren't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Especially 100%. if we're on the podcast, <laughs> so, right? Um, <laughs> so also, the um, five of their top seven in the varsity race are sophomores as well, um, which I think also kind of makes a big difference because, you know, they have so many, you know, say in their top, what, 14, they have 12 freshmen or sophomores right and i think that makes a really big difference because you know that group is going to be together for so long um that that really helps just like build the team um atmosphere and and that camaraderie which you know does make a difference so you know that that group is going to be running together for for three years um without anybody leaving so um you know if you're not on hanover that's a little scary (laughs) And I think those numbers tell you something about the program in a big picture sense, mm-hmm. that it must be a place that they like being, that they're they're choosing, you know, they're getting a large number of people to come and I think Hanover's not a huge school. It's not like that's, right. a, you know, Pinkerton's 3,000 people. Yeah. You know, you told me there was 50 kids on the team here. There's not, but if you right. told me there was 50 kids on the team, I'd be like, well, yeah, I got 3,000 right. kids there. You know, Hanover's a teach two school, like, and they're managing to get, convince these like, a huge number of girls to come and be a part of something. And cross country's hard, you know. Yeah. It's it's a tough sport, and a lot of people you're like, yeah, you want to go out and run seven miles tomorrow? I know. Also, it's going to be a uh, 52 and raining. I know. And they're like, I that's the least enjoyable thing I could possibly <laughs> imagine doing. With, human. Yeah, exactly. Right. Running during, and obviously these girls had to have been running during the summer to be doing this well oh, this sure. early in the season. Absolutely. And you know, it, it says I think a lot about the fact the culture up there must be really good right now. We gotta get somebody on our podcast I, from there. Yeah, maybe even week three. What's going gonna, on? Get them up here. Right. Yeah, Seriously. Here. <laughs> Give us so, some um, secrets. any other shout outs that you have for the National North uh, invite, uh, Mr. French? I, I, Giardina is, yeah. I think, my big shout. I was just so impressed with his run. He was somebody right from the start. You know, he. I feel like this was his opportunity to just remind everybody that he is the guy to beat this season, and he did it. Yeah. And uh, it's, you know, I'm really looking forward. to something we'll talk about in the Manchester invite to see right. how he how he does and. Can he, is he going to make that next leap up from a New Hampshire guy to a everybody guy? Right, right. So segue to yeah, right? the Manchester Invitational. So uh, this is uh, the meat of the season before we get into like the end of the season. This is really kind of where we all get to see each so other. So fast, right? It feels like we just started it now. You're like, well, it's Manchester. So the season's almost over. I know. Like, how did that <laughs> happen? I, it's crazy. So, so coach, tell us like when you're, you're coaching your team, what are your goals, um, you know, as a coach for Manchester Invitational? I, so I think, you know, when you talk about, you know, coaching for the season, it, it really kind of depends on what type of team are you looking at? Are you coaching a team that year that has aspirations to try and win the meet? Or are you I'm going to shut off my walkie. So you keep going. I'm going to keep going. All right. So, you know, this year, my team's very much in a rebuild, rebuilding year. I've got five sophomores in my varsity. And so our focus is really on like long term growth. We have a group of guys that like we think when they're, especially when they're seniors, that they will potentially be so, like a, the kind of team that might have a shot at winning something like Manchester, which is tough to do. It's a yeah. very competitive meet. So our focus is really on building experience and trying to, to get through the course and feel good about Manchester. Right. I think it's a really easy course, like if you go there and struggle to like kind of get a bug in your yeah. head about the challenge that is Manchester. Cause it is, it's a tough mm-hmm. course. It is and, a real cross country course. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Uh, and yeah, I think that it's a court. Nashua was never going to get in your head. No. It's not hard. No. It's not a difficult course. And it's not to say you're going to run well there every time, but it's you're never going to leave Manchester or Nashua and be like, that was a hard time right. because of the mm-hmm. course. Manchester is a difficult course. Yeah. And so it, the course can beat you. Yeah. And so, you know, instilling a sense of confidence that we go up to Manchester and that we're going to succeed at Manchester, right. I think is really important because Manchester, this meet is, is big, but then also D1s. Right. So if you can get that kind of mentality into them when they're young, that like, hey, 
I'm good at this course. This is the course doesn't beat me. I know how to run this thing. It's huge. So mm-hmm. that's really, you know, when I'm when I'm going to be talking to my guys tomorrow, I'm going to be trying to instill some confidence and say, hey, guys, you you get to choose whether or not you succeed at this course. Right. You have you can beat this course. This course isn't going to beat you. Yeah. Now, I feel like you're, you're kind of on the other end of the spectrum of something on that. Like, so what, what are your focuses going to be? So with us, I, I mean, I do agree with that 100 um, percent. I like our athletes to see um, themselves, you know, in, in where they compare with the rest of the state. So I, I, you know, I think it's the first time for our athletes to really see how they stack up. And, you know, you can pull those results and say you're you're here in Division One. you know, you're here in the state. And I think that's really valuable data. Um, I also think that, um, you know, I like to share with them that it's, it is a tough course, but everybody's racing the same course. It's not like you're racing Dairyfield and the people next to you are racing Nashua's, Nashua's course, right? So to me, I think if you learn that course and you learn how to race it, it can be a really fast course. So this is the first experience on Dairy Field to like draw on that and to kind of teach them about the course and, you know, which places to push and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think it's just technical. And I think, you know, when you learn how to race it, I think it can be really fast, actually. For some reason, you described that gave me a cursed mem- like memory from Manchester of okay. how it was when you and I were running because there was a difference in the oh, course that wait, got what? removed. Right, that's true. There were literal barriers. Yes. And you had to jump yes, over like them during the course. They which, weren't small which either. Which folks, you know, like worked out really well for me. I'm 4'11". <laughs> it was really, it was really something. Though the downhill was all on pavement and that was oh screaming fast, but too much pavement. Oh, it was brutal. But yeah. in, there was a year, the ones that had rained and yes. there was leaves all over it. It was like running down ice. Everyone right. looked like they they were like, oh, this is how I die. Right. Running down the hill at Manchester because it's all covered in leaves and they're wet. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, those barriers were brood of a little horse thing. Oh my like, gosh, yeah. They were only like a foot and a half tall, but when you were getting ready to go up that steepest part and you had to jump over. Right. <laughs> it was just like, oh no, why? So yeah, so you know, as a coach, I think it's just about the experience. And then we put our freshmen in the freshman race. I like them to see where they stack up. So. We do the same thing. Yeah, I I re- and I you know, is there one opportunity to right. run against the freshman in the state and yeah. kind of you know kind of kick it old school like middle school style? And I just kind of love it. I yeah, love it. it's really cool. And it's yeah. a very as much as it's two miles, it's still super competitive. Right. There's usually a bunch of really good kids in it. Sure. And you know, shout out to one of my former runners who still is the course record holder, Will Heenan. So of the the freshman race. Wow, that's amazing. Amazing. He was awesome. He was so good as freshman year. So cool. So should we talk a little bit about what what we have coming up here? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I think the small school race is going to be kind of awesome because we haven't seen, it's going to be more than kind of, right, folks? Um, we haven't seen Hanover and Oyster River together this season, right? So I got to see Oyster River at Demerit Hill at the beginning of the season and wow, did they look good. Like, Knew they were going to be good this season, but wow, they just, they really ran strong on a day. The heat was really bad and like they, they looked yeah. like a force to be reckoned with. And then seeing Hanover this weekend, I was right. like, oh man, these guys are also awesome. But then so is Pinkerton and right. like, who I now Pinkerton's obviously going to be in the bigger race, but in the big school race, but like, uh, yeah, the, I watching those two go head to head is like really exciting. Right. And we have Hoppington in there as well. Yep. So I, I just think uh, we're, our New Hampshire small school teams are going to really like, there's going to be some really fast times in there. Oh, probably really fast yeah. times and on again, the girl side. A nice thing just broadly for the meet. The weather looks pretty good this yeah. weekend. You know, yeah. it's not one of those years where it's just random. We get a super hot or super humid day and it kind of takes down some of the times. It looks like it's going to be nice and cool. Right. And, and we don't have a lot of rain leading up to it. I'm, I'm not expecting the course to be super, super wet. I right. mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Well, we sure we'll will. See, but um, so that will make it faster too. So um, any any thoughts on the boys' small school side? Uh, yeah. So Cope, so Co Brown's going to be up in the, has decided to do the large school. And so getting to see teams like Sauhegan, for example, I, you know, it's funny. I always kind of wish that like, you know, wait, there's like, you know, the 10 ranked teams in the state and uh, all 10 of them are going to be there, but a couple of them are in the small school. I kind of wish they're all going to be together. But, right. Yeah. I know. It's uh, but it'll be exciting. I, I mean, it seems like Sauhegan should be good. Oyster River's got a pretty good team this year on the boys' side as well. So it'll be, and then obviously Hanover on the boys' side has been has been pretty good. So watching those three go at it should be pretty exciting. This is kind of a year where I wish we had that elite race back. Oh gosh, you're. Th- 
another right. like throwback in, I know, right? in history when we oh. used the do you like there was a time people probably don't realize this where like if you look at some of the really old results, we used to have teams come from like California and stuff to run in that race back when like Manchester Central was in full dynasty mode. Right. And Seriously. I, I just I remember I think it was maybe my junior year or my senior year team. They were like number four in the country and they came to the Manchester Invitational specifically to run against Central. And right. it was just like a battle of titans, and it was super, super cool to watch. So cool, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's going to be exciting. And then, um, so the the small school race takes place at twelve uh, for those fans that want to show up. Um, not that you can't find that stuff readily, right? And oh then, yeah. Um, the girls large large school uh, takes place at 1 p.m. Um, and that, I think, is going to be really kind of awesome, too, because we have, you know, Pinkerton and Bedford, um, also Dover and Keene. So we haven't seen Dover yet. We did see Keene at the relays, but that's not really, that doesn't give us a clear picture. I think Keene's going to definitely have their, they've got a, a pretty large team. They're going to have a nice pack there. And I think Dover is going to be pretty good. So um, just those New Hampshire teams, I think, are going to be really strong. Um, well, for sure. And then we have, uh, you know, the perennial uh, Champlain Valley, who's always at the top of New England. They, they won this Vermont. last year. They're like the frequency they're nationally ranked is incredible to me because you'd think like, oh, they're from like rural Vermont. And, but they clearly have something going up there that works right. awesome because they just every single year they're awesome. Outstanding. Every single and year. And they have red jerseys. They're easy so, to see. Yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes I'm like, when I see them from afar, I think it might be my team. I'm like, no. You know, so it's kind of like a bummer when that happens. But yeah, so I mean, that that's going to be a really awesome race too. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pumped for the boys race. Yeah. I, I think it's going to be an absolute one to watch. So we have, obviously we have tons of the New Hampshire schools. Now South will be in there. Pinkerton's going to be in there. Uh, and there are one, two right now, but uh, we're getting, we have the number one school from like, like half of New England, basically the number one Vermont school is going to be there. The number two Vermont school is going to wow. be there. The other Vermont number school, number two school is going to be there. Cause apparently they decided they have a tie at number two. Oh boy. Uh, the Rhode Island number one is going to be there. The Rhode Island number two is going to be there. Massachusetts number one is going to be there, but they're kind of sneaky and they don't actually run their varsity. Interesting. So they're like fake there. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. So I, so all in all, we're going to have some, some really awesome teams competing. Yeah, it should yeah. be. And I, I think South has genuinely got a, like a solid chance to win it this year. Oh, and then mm. we have, we have the sneaky one that comes in, which is Phillips Exeter. Right. Oh, and so tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. So Phillips Exeter, obviously very good this year. They have this, this kid, Bry Byron Grievous, who, uh, if you'll recall last year, he and Aiden raced on a couple of different, if you follow this kind of thing, they followed, they raced a few times. Byron generally always beat him. Like he was, but he was a junior last year and he's just as Aiden was an arguably, you know, you could, I, you could argue that Aiden's the best high school runner in New Hampshire history. Right. Ex Except for maybe Byron, and like it's it's incredible how good this kid is, wow. and so he's just run some some amazing times. So this is his season opener, to my understanding. So because obviously, if you're when you're ranked number two in the country, your plans are Nike or Foot Lockers right. or one of those right. types of things. So if you're training too hard too early, by the time you get to those meets, you're gonna be burned out. So this, it sounds like this will be kind of be his, his rust buster. That's awesome. And yeah. It's so so good he that was um, he was twelfth at uh, nationals last year um yeah at, at nxr so and you know m most of those guys have graduated so you know like you said he's ranked second in the country he's like you know one of the top guys like in the whole country um so it, it should be really exciting to see him at, at manchester and it's just exciting to have a guy like that in a race because well, everybody tries to chase him. And, yeah. you know, obviously for a lot of people, uh, that plan doesn't work out so good. But for the few that do, they end up running these, like, really amazing times sometimes. Yeah. He's think... actually, there's another. And... Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, he he probably has, um, you know, one of the, the better shots at going after uh, Ben True's record that we've seen um, in, in recent years. Yeah. Obviously, Ben's had that record for a long time. And incredibly successful runner i mean if you if you can take down a record from a guy like ben true obviously you've wow. yeah i think it's what oh three i think career. yeah i think it's really cool that that phillips can come to this meet because i know they can't come to everything you yeah. know um just given the type of school they are so we actually um, have the two phillips is phillips uh, right. i think it's andover is also there they're that's just really phillips cool. academy right but right. they have, so they also have a nationally ranked runner that's coming wow. he's not quite as high up the rankings he's 79 
uh, but he's still pretty good. And so he's fun because, as I mentioned in the preview, like he's fun because uh, Giardina has actually run pretty similar times to him, just slightly slower. So I have a feeling that as much as we're going to kind of watch Byron run away with it a little bit, uh, the battle for second could actually be super exciting on the boys' side, and we could see some really, really quick times for those two guys. Awesome. So then that leads to, like, what questions do you think you might have answered by by this weekend? Ooh, I, because there's so many of the ranked teams in that race, like, you know, until you see them all together, I feel right. like, you know, we, we make the rankings like you and I are involved in the emails right. or whatever that like do the rankings and stuff. And it's kind of a little bit of a guessing game up to, I think, this weekend that mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to compare teams where we're at different meets and like we try to do a good job, but it's still a little bit of a guess. So yeah. this one's fun because, you know, you really can ultimately kind of put everything together and get your first real eyeball on exactly what everybody's got at the table at this point of the season, which right. is I think, really exciting, right? I, I think it's super exciting. And I, I'm excited to see Hanover and Oyster River. I think for me, it's like, which one's going to be stronger? They have such strong front runners. Oh, for sure. Um, so I think that's going to be, to me, that's the race to watch. I mean, not that I'm not excited for my own race with my <laughs> girls. And I know that they're going to give it their all. And, um, you know, and we have really really something special on our team too but like just to see that those guys head to head I, i'm really excited about that i get what you mean like the coach in you is excited for your for your team's yes. race but the fan in you yes. is excited to see this other one yeah exactly. i mean the yeah. the oyster river um hanover girls race you know should be probably the closest race of the day and really nobody knows how it's gonna go because, um, you know, like we talked about, like you saw Oyster River at Bobcat and they looked incredible. And then so, you know, after that race, everyone was like, oh, OK, Oyster River is like really, really good. You know, they might be the favorites. And then at Nashua uh, North, all of a sudden, like Hanover was also incredible. And so now it's like we get to see them finally go head to head. Yeah, and it's just gonna be really, really cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, super cool. I feel like you, if we pulled like ten different coaches in here right now, and we're like, who's better, Wish River or Hanover? I bet we'd get like half of them would go one way, half of them would go yeah, the other right? way. Nobody knows how this is gonna go. Yeah. You can't really mm -hmm. compare the times from the things they did because Bobcat's so hard and right. Nashville is so fast. And I so, know like, those aren't really helpful and different, really cool. different styles of courses. And that's you know that's the other fun thing with Manchester too is like we saw some awesome stuff last week right. in Nashua, but Nashua's super flat. I mm -hmm. know. So it's like this is really going to challenge the cross country runner and everybody, right? Yeah. That's what I love about Dairy Field is it really brings out like that strength component in our athletes, and it's like it's true cross country. I mean, I don't think I raced a course that hard in my entire college career like dairy field like in terms of just the hills like the elevation and downhills and being technical and having to negotiate that trail um it just really brings out um you know the true cross country um and like where and kind of that strength yeah that the athletes have on a really flat course i feel like you can kind of get away with some things like, yeah especially on the mental side of running sure. that if you've made if you make an error early on i think there's a lot of chance to recover whereas on a course like manchester if you make a mistake you know if you that first mile you go out way too hard that second mile is not good you're not gonna feel good it's gonna right. it's gonna pile on you instead and right. so like you know your errors almost compound at manchester right and we're so, making our athletes seem nervous about it but it's gonna be great guys it's gonna be the best my guys have trained hills a ton they yes. should be fully ready for everything that Absolutely. manchester throws at them so I'm, I'm not worried about my no guys. no it's gonna be great and so for our uh listeners out there if you can't make it to watch the barn burner of the races that we have going on i just shout out to mike clark for that phrase right oh it's, yeah it's gonna be a bomb go, go to move um if you can't make that uh where else can you find uh all things manchester invitational i'm just putting it out to you guys because i've been talking so much where do we find that on our website? Oh, yeah, gonna, you got to go on to. Well, you got to go on the YouTube. I, are we doing a live feed of this? Is it going to be? Is it going to be live? Um, I don't believe it'll be live, but um, you know, it should be up that afternoon. Um, That's great. You know, we're we're usually pretty good at getting things up as soon as possible, especially for something as exciting as Manchester. Um, right. But then also for all the results on the website, we have the um, Hoka Results Hub which will have links to um, all of the Manchester results, but then also just pretty much any results from big meets, small meets all around the state. Um, so it's it's kind of nice, like, because, I mean, you guys know, running results are, like, impossible to find. 
Like, right. I'm, I'm always looking for, I'm like, oh, I know this race was today and I go to look for the results and they just don't exist. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, kind of a, a consolidated um, spot where you can look for all the results. And then also mm -hmm. if, um, you know, any meet directors, coaches, whatever, have results from even just like dual meets, like just weekday meets, anything that you want to send in and have on that results hub, um, send all that stuff in, you know, um, results just can be you know pdf it could just be a picture of paper results if it's like hand timed just send it in and and then that way we can have as as much um results as possible kind of available to everybody yeah so that's the hoka meet results hub so uh check that out for all the results um not just of manchester but also uh everything all new hampshire cross country um and and it also has pictures so we're looking for coaches to send in all that stuff like results pictures you know we we can't um, you know, we can't post or share that results uh, from meets if they're, you know, some random weekday meets unless we get them from the coaches. So and the kids care. Like yeah. when other teams, their stuff's not up there. I hear about it from my kids. Sure. They're like, why aren't the results are from such and such meet? I'm like, whoa, whoa. I don't, they know I'm involved with the website. So they think I have something to do with it. Right. So I'm like, they got to send it to us. Otherwise yeah. we can't put them up. So everybody check that out. So we have anything else? Any other thoughts before we close it out? Um, hey, I, just good luck to everybody. And like I said earlier, don't let the course beat you. You right. you beat the course. Go out there with a really positive mental attitude. I think that's the most most valuable thing you can ever have at Manchester is, is that second mile, especially. Stay positive. Find something good to, to think about. Go to your happy place. I would say, I, um, I'm, oh. sorry, just like no. for, for Manchester specifically, like, um, you know, you have to enjoy it because – it you know it is a really hard course and and i've seen a lot of kids just kind of be like oh manchester it's really tough like i don't you know it's gonna be hard it's gonna hurt whatever um but you know that's kind of what this sport is um and that's you know that's just cross country so like if if you kind of just lean into that and go you know it's gonna be hard and i'm just gonna go out there and have a great time like just crushing it then um you know, I think that that really helps um, just because like, you know, you might as well enjoy it if you're going to if you're going to be working that hard. Right. Yeah. And, and to that, too, that like you said, lean in. So that my advice is is lean into that downhill. Don't be afraid of it. Use that downhill and challenge yourself to be comfortable in it. Um, you know, it's a perfect place to practice that, um, while Man Manchester Invitational does mean something at the end of the day, it really doesn't all oh, this is practice for the big show at the end of the season. So really lean into that downhill and just let your legs go. That's my advice. Yeah. yeah. People don't yeah. use that. Yeah. That center of gravity, you do the work for you. <laughs> I, I would say people don't really use that en enough. Um, I know that was something that was always stressed to me. Like when I was racing at Manchester was like you know, use that downhill as much as possible because, um, you know, a lot of people kind of like relax on it and still, you know, probably go faster than they would fl on flat ground. But, um, you know, you can fly down that hill and still recover the whole time. So it's, Absolutely. it's pretty much just free time, free time. Uh, by the time you get Absolutely. to the bottom. So make sure to so sure. go as fast as possible down the downhill. So with that, I don't know, but I would say that I love New Hampshire cross country. How about uh, you, Coach? I love New Hampshire cross country. Wow, that's so funny. I love New Hampshire cross country too. Uh, awesome. <laughs> well, you guys have a great week. We'll see you at Manchester. Hey, and always feel free to come come and say hi to me. I love talking cross country. So if you ever forget to meet and you see me and you're like, oh, I want to go ask him something, go ahead. I will chat with anybody. So. Best of luck, folks.